All right, my name is Kevin Harrington, and today we're going to do a walkthrough of Boulder Studio. So let's dive right in. All right, so when you first open Bowler Studio, today we're going to be looking at version 0.18.4. Uh, we're in an alpha release at the moment, and uh, just to give you an idea of some system uh, stats, it's going to require uh, 6 gigs of RAM, a 64-bit uh, computer. You're going to need the 64-bit version of Java 8, so the, the latest Java 8 in 64-bit version. And uh, from there, that's the only dependencies. You can get those on Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, and today I'm going to be doing my, Debbie, my uh, uh, demo on Ubuntu Linux. So uh, let's take a look. All right, so when you first open up Bowler Studio, the first thing you're going to see is a tutorial. Uh, tutorials are sort of the backbone of knowledge in Bowler Studio, and what it is, it's a website. Uh, the website contains little blobs of code, such as you see here. This little blob of code is a GitHub gist. Uh, they're little bits of code that GitHub hosts and then makes available as a JavaScript tag. Now what Bowler Studio does that your normal browser does not is it sees that little tag, it parses it out, and then down in the bottom right corner here, you see you got this little uh, run button. This run button takes the code that you're looking at and runs it. Welcome to Bowler Studio. And so it says, welcome to Bowler Studio. Uh, so in the starting tutorial, you got uh, uh, a few high-level things that you can do with Bowler Studio. So uh, the, the next step, it sort of describes what this process is. And uh, for those of, of you who actually want to jump into coding right away, what you're going to see is this make a copy button. So the code on the screen there, uh, you can, with just this button, make a copy. And once you have your uh, uh, copy here, uh, you can go ahead and edit it. And from there, you can make changes to the code. Hello, welcome. Welcome, YouTube. Welcome, YouTube. Well, almost. <laughs> uh, let's see if uh, mics are better. Welcome, YouTube. Thank you. All right. Thank you for welcoming us, Boiler Studio. Uh, all right. So, uh, that's the basics of uh, seeing some code, modifying the code. Uh, and then if you ever want to go back to it, you just run right through that same process. And here you are back at your file. Now, let's say you wanted to share this file with some friends. You just hit the uh, publish button right there. And it's a little message. Uh, for those of you familiar with software development, this is a commit message. And you say, I changed. Change the words for YouTube. All right, I hit publish, and you can see down at the bottom here, the file has been pushed to your copy on GitHub. Now, everything in Boulder Studio works uh, as if it's a web application, even though it is running on your computer. So you do need to be logged in to GitHub. I'm uh, logged in under my lovely little demo account. And if you ever want to go look up any files that you've created before, you can take a look right from the menu here, uh, hover over uh, the uh, repository. It will clone the repository simply by putting your mouse and hovering over it and pull up the files uh, all the way to the right. And you can just go ahead and click on some demo from before. Uh, and you can go look and see if we can go find our Hello World example. There it is. And you can pull it up from the menu that way. So that's how to go uh, create code, make copies of code, uh, and then pull it back up. Now, uh, we support a, a few languages here. Uh, so we have Clojure. You can write scripts in Clojure. And if uh, you're not as concerned about speed. You can write scripts in Python. Uh, and where things start to get really interesting is this is this Bowler Studio is really just a collection of libraries, Java libraries, that you can access through these scripts. So. Uh, one of the more interesting libraries that uh, I use on a, a regular basis is the 3D library. So this lets us create shapes, and you can click on shapes, and you can take a look at the, the various shapes that you're creating. Oh, cool. But how did we create it? So, what's the process? Make a copy. Edit your copy. 
Now let's take a look at the code. This is the code. If you're familiar with OpenSCAD, uh, a little bit of the, the concept of using code to create CAD uh, will be very familiar to you, but this is not your standard uh, OpenSCAD. If you sort of click on uh, a line of code, the object that uh, is created from that line highlights. Now this is interesting. When you click on the sphere, all the objects that interact with that sphere are highlighted. But if you just click on the sphere interact uh, intersect with the cube, just the sphere intersect with cube, and there's two of them, are highlighted. So this is a sort of a, a quick debug your way through the code. What does this line do? You know, uh, what, is, uh, what does this line do? Oh, hey, that's a servo. Okay. So you can get uh, a really good idea of what your, your code is doing just by clicking through it uh, before you even uh, write or, or modify it. And this is right in the uh, right out of the browser tutorial. So uh, in it, what do we do with this CAD? Well, you know, we make robots with it, of course. Uh, why would you do anything but make a robot? So it's going to build the whole robot for us. And uh, another one of the little neat features of Bowler Studio here is uh, you can drag out these windows and stick them back in as tabs. And that's true for all of the... Uh, tabs here, you can pull out Creature Lab, and if you want it to be a tab instead so you have more room, you can do that. Uh, you can pull it off and stick it on another screen, that works too. Uh, but what we have here is a creature, and this is uh, my nice little hexapod robot, and this is 3D printable. Uh, you just hit the Generate CAD button and it'll generate the parts to 3D print. That's not what we're doing right now, we'll come back around to that. Uh, but we just want to explore our robot. So at the top is the robot base, and uh, just by clicking on it in the menu, it highlights the base. Uh, and as you click around, it'll show you uh, what the legs are. So there's one of the legs, and that's how that works. And if you click on the links, it'll highlight each of the links. And down in the right, a context menu will pop up, and you can move that link around. Uh, you can grab the other link, and you can move that around. Look at that. We live in the future. So Bowler Studio lets you create these uh, robot parts uh, piece by piece, and then uh, you can navigate them. Once you're you're happy with a robot, or, or you just want to take it from here and, and start building your own, you hit the uh, Make a Copy of Creature button, and uh, your own copy of uh, the robot will be created and, and popped open in, in a new window. So, uh, so there's our, our lovely little creature. Now, back on the script that we ran, uh, to create him, uh, this is going to run him through a series of steps. He's going to walk forward, he's going to walk backwards, he's going to turn around, uh, and you can see how you can use code to control robots. So here it is, all these walking controls are, are built-ins. Uh, you just tell it to move and in a particular direction, and uh, the kinematics will figure out how to make uh, it walk. Uh, then it's going to drop down and move one of the legs up, down, uh, move it in positive x, and then in y, and back to the center, and then it's going to move the links individually, the first link there, the second link next, and here's the third link moving last of all. So uh, the next step in the tutorial really shows us something even more interesting when we take our uh, robot and our uh, little blocks of CAD, and we're going to uh, actually run them uh, together in a simulated robot. And there it goes. And with the recording running at the, the same time, this is a little bit heavy on my computer, uh, but the uh, the more resources you have, uh, the more accurate you can make the simulation. And uh, if you have a, a pretty good computer with a halfway decent graphics card, you can start to see uh, uh, some very good performance. All right, now all the render seems to have caught up, so it's walking nicely, and I can walk it around from the buttons. So once it computes everything, this is one of the nice parts about uh, uh, Java. 
you hit a uh, the JIT compiler and uh, the code becomes uh, faster at runtime. So every time it runs into an edge condition that takes a lot of compute power, the JIT compiler will jump in there and, and optimize it out. So there you go. You can simulate your robots. Uh, at any point, you can jump in and grab uh, hardware. So OpenCV. I uh, don't. I'm not going to do any of the hardware demos today, just because that requires a lot of back and forth with the camera. But, so I want to give you a very high level of uh, Boulder Studio itself. Um, when you start thinking about creating uh, scripts and then deploying them, uh, as I said, the the Bowler Studio requires a lot of RAM and a lot of processing power, but uh, you can run the scripts on the runtime. So the runtime is all the libraries and everything you need to run it, just no visualization, and that will run on a Raspi, something with uh, half a gig of RAM and no special graphics card. And uh, what's neat about the, uh, the, the runtime itself is it lets you call scripts and call them up as functions. So uh, what you see here is a uh, script that is calling another script. So uh, in the Groovy language, we have this uh, data type called closure. It's like a function, uh, an anonymous inner function. And another script actually creates the function and then passes it linked through Git, literally through Git, into uh, the other script. So your script says, hey, I want a function in this Git repository at this version from this file and at runtime it will pull it down from git compile it uh, pull it down from git if it's not already on the disk if it is on the disk it uses the cache uh, if there's no network connection it always uses the cache uh, and it'll compile it and run your your function at, at fully compiled java speed so once you're in the runtime you run this function now you're thinking with power tools or more specifically thinking with functions your function runs just as fast as any piece of compiled Java. So that's the real power of the system, that uh, even though that they are scripts and they're scattered all over the place, when the runtime happens, all of these scripts are uh, compiled in the same memory space and they can pass data back and forth between them. Whole objects, gigabytes of data can be passed by reference in, in a matter of nanoseconds, simply because the architecture allows for that to happen. So. Uh, so thank you for uh, uh, for watching my uh, little Bowler Studio video. Uh, I hope you have a better idea of uh, some of the cool stuff that you can do.